అందరికీ నమస్కారం మీరు ఛానల్ని మొదటిసారి చూస్తున్నట్లయితే నేను సుమతి చింతల ఈ రోజు నేను సాత్విక ప్లాన్ స్టూడియోకి అయితే వచ్చానండి ఈ స్టూడియో ఫౌండర్ మరియు సిఈఓ చందన్ గౌడ గారు ఆయన హార్టికల్చర్లో గ్రాడ్యుయేషన్ చేసి ఈ నర్సరీ అయితే పెట్టారండి ఇక్కడ వీళ్ళు రేర్ అండ్ ఎగ్జాటిక్ ఇండోర్ అండ్ అవుట్డోర్ ప్లాంట్స్ని సేల్ చేస్తారు వీళ్ళకు ఒక ఇన్స్టాగ్రామ్ పేజ్ ఉంది మరియు వెబ్సైట్ కూడా ఉంది మీరు నర్సరీకి వెళ్ళి డైరెక్ట్గా మొక్కలు కొనుక్కోలేము అనుకుంటే వాళ్ళ ఇన్స్టాగ్రామ్ పేజ్ నుంచి కానీ లేకపోతే వాళ్ళ వెబ్సైట్ నుంచి కానీ మీరు మొక్కలు అయితే ఆన్లైన్లో ఆర్డర్ చేసుకోవచ్చు చందన్ గారు స్వతహాగా ప్లాంట్ హాబీస్ట్ అవ్వడం వల్ల ఈయన రకరకాల దేశాలు కూడా వెళ్ళి అక్కడ ఉన్న రేర్ కలెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ప్లాంట్స్ని కూడా సేకరిస్తూ ఉంటారండి చందన్ గారు ఫ్రీగా ట్రీ క్యాంపెయిన్ కూడా చేస్తున్నారండి అంటే వీళ్ళు పది రకాల పళ్ళ మొక్కల్ని ఫ్రీగా ఇస్తారనమాట సో మీకు ఎవరికైనా ఇంట్రెస్ట్ ఉంటే ఆ డీటెయిల్స్ అన్ని వాళ్ళ ఇన్స్టాగ్రామ్ పేజ్లో ఉన్నాయి చెక్ చేయొచ్చు చందన్ గారు లాస్ట్ ఇయర్ లాల్బాగ్లో జరిగిన ఫ్లవర్ షోలో ప్యాలడోరియం అనే ఒక కాన్సెప్ట్ని అయితే ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ చేశారండి ఆ కాన్సెప్ట్కి చాలా మంచి స్పందన రావడం వల్ల కిచ్చా సుదీప్ గారు వాళ్ళ ఇంట్లో ఆ ప్యాలడోరియం సెటప్ అయితే చేయించుకున్నారు అలాగే చందన్ గారు చాలామంది సెలబ్రిటీస్తో కూడా వర్క్ చేస్తూ వచ్చారండి సో ఈరోజు మనం చందన్ గారిని కలుసుకొని ఆ స్టూడియో విశేషాలని తెలుసుకుందాం సో ఇప్పుడైతే మనం చందన్ గౌడ గారిని మీట్ అవుదాము కాకపోతే చిన్న ప్రాబ్లం ఏంటంటే సో ఆయన కర్ణాటకలో పుట్టి పెరిగారు కాబట్టి సో ఆయనకి కన్నడ అండ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ బాగా ఫ్లూయెంట్గా వచ్చండి తెలుగు అయితే ఆయనకి రాదనమాట సో మ్యాక్సిమం నేను మధ్యలో మీ డౌట్స్ అన్ని తెలుగులో నేను క్లారిఫై చేయడానికైతే ట్రై చేస్తాను కుదిరినంత మట్టికి మనం అన్ని ఇంగ్లీషుని తెలుగుని కంబైన్ చేసుకొని అందరికీ అర్థమయ్యేలాగా ఈ వీడియో అయితే నేను చేయడానికి ట్రై చేస్తాను సో ఇప్పుడైతే అయితే నేను చందన్ గారిని ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ చేస్తాను హలో చందన్ గారు హలో అందరి తెలుగు వాళ్ళకి నమస్కారం కొంచెం కొంచెం తెలుగు అర్థమవుతుంది నేను కూడా రాణా నాయుడు వెంకటేష్ గారి ఫ్యాన్ కొంచెం కొంచెం అర్థమవుతుంది తెలుగు మూవీస్ చూస్తాను కదా స్పీకింగ్ ఇట్స్ లిటిల్ డిఫికల్ట్ బట్ ఐ కెన్ అండర్స్టాండ్ తెలుగు so myself chandan gowda i am an horticulture graduate so i have a company called sadvika plant studio there we do uh, sell exotic and rare and exotic plants uh, we also do consultancy we give uh, uh, workshops and lectures for uh, garden enthusiasts on uh, how to maintain your garden and uh, about the bonsai farming all those exotic and uh, the specialized garden ideas and all we share and our main service is in landscaping so landscape gardening is our main core business where we do uh, take up designing and execution of uh, landscape works so garden activities since you told that you are uh, supplying all the rare and exotic plants so is it uh, like is it possible for you to deliver all over the country are you delivering all over the country yeah we have a website sadvikaplantstudio.com okay where uh, we deliver plants across the country so mm-hmm. people can order plants from anywhere of, uh, from the country we, we can uh, pack them carefully and ship it through a professional couriers okay. so they they are going to do deliver the plants across the country we have been doing this since 5 years okay and the website uh, we have newly launched uh-huh. so initially we were doing this trading from uh, instagram and whatsapp family okay so i have an instagram page sadvika plant studio okay where uh, people dm us or we send them a link or from mm-hmm. there they can order but now we have uh, made a website where they can directly order the plants we are going to deliver all across the country and in- interested can uh, come over to our nursery also it is uh, situated at footlil of nandi hills mm-hmm. so just on, uh, from bangalore it's around uh, 28 kilometers so towards the nandi hills road okay. so in the main road itself they can come over and drop into our location they can uh, see the plants they can self pick up the plants and yeah. there are a lot of choices we can make in our studio okay. so it is not na- just a nursery we have made mm-hmm. it into an experience center okay. where people can uh, come in experience the plants experience the concept and they can order from our website so that is one way they can do or else if they are from a far place they can just uh, order it through our website okay. and by the way we will be listing out uh, a lot of free plants also mm-hmm. so nowadays nursery has become a commercial po- uh, part of you but uh, for me i started with a hobby mm-hmm. i understand the requirement of a hobbyist so okay. being a hobbyist i understand the uh, Uh, main requirements what people will be uh, uh, thinking about plants so uh, what i do is whatever the extra plants we propagate we list it them list them as free plants with in every week so weekends we list free plants like whenever we have a excess quantity we list them in website as free of cost plants okay. so people can order those plants where we don't charge them on for planting things and all but there will be minimal uh, packaging and transportation charges that that would be like uh, 60 80 rupees which they can bear mm-hmm. so each person will be getting a single plant at free of cost 
लास्ट टाइम वी आर अराउंड लिस्टेड थर्टी टू प्लान ऑल द प्लान वर सोल्ड आउट इन अ डे एंड दैट वॉज कम्प्लीटली फ्री ओके So that is how so we are. So is it like only you do only the exotic plants in the sense like uh, succulents and uh, uh, indoor plants? You also deal with uh, fruit plants. Uh, Ma'am, uh, the thing is, uh, nursery has become a lot of competition in the business now. Mm-hmm. So it's not just uh, uh, selling the plants. My intention is uh, building a uh, professional industry in nursery. That's mm-hmm. the reason I have opted for rare and exotic plant. But along with rare and exotic plant, we have uh, the regular uh, indoors, outdoors, okay. and landscaping plants. All those collections. Mm-hmm. But we often emphasize on rare and exotic plants uh-huh. because that is our core USP in uh, okay. in our business. Uh-huh. That is what we have got a name from. Okay. So we concentrate mainly on rare and exotic plants. But other than rare and exotic, to cater the nursery industry, we have all other regular plants okay. as well. Okay. So main ga exotic plants. So me ke kada hi na dorakan ne bhi rarest variety kaawali ante matam tapa kunda sadhu ka plant studio le dorukte andi. Danta apart me routine ga me intlo ga ne terrace le ga ne plant jas kordan kinder outdoor plants gorda will dekhe available ga ontei. But will main motto ante ante me ke kada dorakan ne rarest variety ante me happy ga sadhu ka plant studio ne the contact chhe. इपू चंदन गार कमी असल आयन की मोकल मीद प्रेम एला मोदल इवन असल कलेक्टर आये आशय अड़ते सो चंदन प्लीज़ टेल मी हाउ डिड यू स्टार्ट दिस लाइक हाउ डिड युवर इंट्रस्ट स्टार्ट इट बेसिकली ऐम फ्रम अ फार्मिंग बैकग्रउंड सो मई पेरेंट्स आर् डूइंग फार्मिंग सिंस दे चैलूड अंड मई ग्रांड पेरेंट्स वर्स आलो इंट फार्मिंग सो ड्यूरिंग मई चैलूड सो ई यूज टू वर्क इन मई फार्म So oh. my grandparents used to take me around the farm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to do the weeding part, or uh, even we used to grow roses, uh, China aster, and all. So they used to take me in the morning to pick up flowers and all. That's where I uh, I was very much connected to nature and these farming activities and all. So my grandparent was very much passionate in collecting uh, ornamental plants, raising them in pot and all. He used to uh, teach me to a way of making bonsai. Still, I remember I have a bonsai of uh, 22 year old, mm-hmm. which my grandparent I did it in my childhood, and yeah. still I'm keeping that with me. Oh. So that's not a professional bonsai, but uh, fortunately for a memory. So it it, it uh, reminds me of my interest in horticulture, the way uh, when I was in. Uh, Like uh, I guess four or five year old, my grandparents used to teach me about these palms, all these flowering plants. Mm-hmm. See that time in uh, in 2003, or I guess during that uh, duration, I don't remember properly. Bird of Paradise was introduced. Bird of Paradise is a exotic plant from uh, some different country, like uh, I think uh, African country. Mm-hmm. So at that time, uh, the plant when when it was introduced, it was in our farm also. So for horticulture students, the Bird of Paradise concepts uh, will be. um thought uh, during their course work like when they are uh, u- during their first year of degree mm-hmm. for me it was like when i was in the childhood i knew this bird of paradise and bonsai and all that's where my grandparent uh, planted an interest in this uh, horticulture and landscape field so he used to carry me on his shoulder and uh, show the lalbagh flower show he used to take me around all, every flower show yearly twice the uh, flower show happens and he used to He carried me on his shoulder uh, when I was young, and he used to show me all those uh, flower show, Krishi Mela in GK Vika, all these things. Mm. So then, uh, slowly, my interest in plants and the collection of ornamentals and all started. So I thought of uh, searching for a degree when I was uh, uh, about to make my decisions in choosing a degree. I was like uh, damn sure that I should go for a veterinary course or a horticulture. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, I could not crack a veterinary seat in Karnataka, but uh, fortunately, I got into horticulture. so my mom is a very supportive woman she used to help me in collecting plants she used to water my plants whenever i'm not in a house you and like we uh, whole family is crazy about these ornamentals so i'm the first generation to start a business in our family mm-hmm. so uh, other than that it's completely farming background now mm-hmm. so i started this business like in a small scale started a in, uh, facebook account initially i had a facebook account mm-hmm. where i was uh, trading small plants which were cultivated in a house and we propagated them in small quantities and we were selling it to the uh, like a small retail uh, outlets and all mm. then i thought of uh, like uh, if scalable how could this model go on then my family supported me to start this business so first time uh, i put a stall in uh, lalbagh so mm. I, i i took all my plants which ever grown in my house i i didn't purchase any plants from outside all these propagated plants i put it in the lalbagh stall and i received a massive response from the crowd mm-hmm. 
so all this uh, like uniquely formed the plants and all then i thought of this is a very uh, valuable thing i can take it forward as a business and i didn't continue my masters in horticulture then mm-hmm. i dropped it and i started my business okay that is where the my interest in business and uh, landscaping started meantime i was also into innovations so mm-hmm. i was received a multiple awards uh, in horticulture and uh, national awards as well the, when i started business uh slowly i started getting recognition from different places and uh, our community uh, local uh, people and all then i was invited for uh, different uh, opportunity i was given different opportunities in lalbar so in 2019 i was given an opportunity to exhibit a new concept that was palladorium mm-hmm. so palladorium is a concept of uh, building a rainforest ecosystem inside a glassware mm-hmm. so you have seen a small terrarium so the larger version of a terrarium including a water body waterfalls fogging automation everything mm. using tropical plants mm. that's a existing concept but uh, i uh, try to uh, domesticate to our conditions so indian conditions so a lot of customized elements were added and uh, after l- a lot of customization i proposed a concept and a process of making terra- that palladorium and i introduced in lalbagh glass so that was the first time interaction in uh, lalbagh so even that received a massive response that was inaugurated by uh, our chief uh, ex chief minister kumar swami okay. the present uh, minister central okay. minister mm-hmm. so and later it was you know uh, again uh, reintroduced and it was inaugurated by deve gowda ji ex our ex prime minister mm-hmm. and lot of other dignitaries and all there uh, usually uh, around 10 to 15 lakh visitors uh, uh, come to lalbagh flash show to view the such exotic concepts and all when i introduced it was a very new thing and people were fascinated out of that concept and like we received a massive response and we have uh, till then i have uh, done projects for uh, very uh, premium uh, clients and all i have done project for uh, central uh, icar new delhi mm-hmm. so there i have done project uh, for a uh, central minister so uh, in, for a granite so 2.0 uh, thing then i have done project in uh, new delhi uh, one more uh, palladorium setup we have done there mm-hmm. and we have done in uh, mumbai and we have done in uh, chikbalapur and uh, local in bangalore we have done a project for sudeep mm-hmm. our uh, uh, ega your yeah, yeah, movie yeah. so kicha sudeep goda kicha sudeep gari yeah. in, in his house right yeah. so while in lo goda in uh, setup chesar and but terrainam ani a concept cheptunnar kada tropical forest ni inside a box create cheyadam so avanni sudeep gar tho goda chesar anamata so sorry sudeep gar tho kicha sudeep gar tho so already deeniki sambandhinchina ipudi terrainium ivanni kuda nenu last time january lo jarigina flower show lo so chandan gar akada represent chesina terrainium adantha nenu lalbagh flower show lo chupinchanu evarakana interest unta aa video kuda tappakunda check cheyandi inni chestunaru campaign lo antunaru akada project chesaru antunaru ikkada project chestunaru naaku ayin chustenemo chaala chinna kanipistunnaru ayin age nunchi ivanni start chesaru anake telledu but okka sari adik anukundam So Chandan are you single or married because you <laughs> you still look so young to me So probably this would be a controversial question to be answered Okay <laughs> So even yeah uh, I'm not at married so I'm single that's for uh, uh, clarification Okay <laughs> Unfortunately I could not find a girl who is more crazy about plants like me probably uh, uh, I would be uh, much interested in a girl who shows uh, less interest in me more than uh, she should be interested in my plants or something crazy about plants <laughs> if any of your viewers are really interested uh, probably we can think about it so chosnar kada evarana interest unte meer definitely sadhuka plants to work with me meer chandan gar ni kalavachu so ipudaithe manam ayin daggara unna rarest collection em em collection undi aa plants gurinchi aithe manam telusukundam andi ఇప్పుడు నా దగ్గర అయితే రేరెస్ట్ కార్నివోర్ ప్లాంట్ అయితే ఉందండి చిన్నప్పుడు ఇప్పుడు బుక్స్ లో చదువుకున్నాను తర్వాత డిస్కవరీ ఛానల్స్ లో చూసాను లైవ్ గా నేనైతే ఎప్పుడు ఒక కార్నివోర్ ప్లాంట్ అయితే చూడలేదు సో ఇప్పుడు దీని గురించి చందన్ గారిని అడిగి అసలు దీని కథ కమీష్ ఏంటో కనుక్కుందాము చందన్ కెన్ యూ ప్లీజ్ టెల్ మీ అబౌట్ దిస్ ప్లాంట్ యా దిస్ ఇస్ నెపాంతిస్ వెంట్రాటా Uh-huh. so this is called a p- tropical pitcher plant so commonly we say it as a pitcher plant okay so this is a carnivorous plant so mm-hmm. we don't say it insectivorous because there are a possibility where this plant has trapped uh, even uh, some mammals some birds and all so uh-huh. that is why this is called carnivorous plant okay so in in the category of carnivorous plant there are a lot of other plants like sundew drosera mm-hmm. or uh, even this uh, tropical pitcher plant and uh, saracenias and uh, utricularias uh, likewise there are few other uh, uh, carnivorous plant but the 
most easiest plant to grow is this uh, tropical pitcher plant mm -hmm. but these are not easy to find these are very rare and exotic plants the, mm -hmm. most of these plants are in urge of extinction in the wild mm -hmm. but there are uh, a very uh, minimum uh, number of uh, hobbies to uh, are crazy about these plants and they are cultivating them this is one of the very common uh, and easy uh, maintenance uh, nepanthus variety this is called okay. nepanthus ventrata okay so you can have a closer look of this this is a creeper like tree mm -hmm. i mean uh, creeper like plant which mm -hmm. will produce this type of pitcher this is called pitcher mm -hmm. so this is a place where it traps the insects okay so there will be a, a one quarter of filled uh, i mean digestive enzymes mm -hmm. so that will be produced by this plant itself from mm -hmm. this leaves it will send out the digestive enzymes here mm -hmm. in that digestive enzyme there will be more than 300 to 600 dif different species of microorganisms okay so that microorganisms will help in uh, breaking down the trapped insect okay so this will uh, emit some uh, specific fragrance mm -hmm. to the insect to attract that will mm -hmm. be like a pheromone mm -hmm. so that due to that fragrance the insects come here and it will be trapped inside okay. once it's gone inside it will not be able to climb up okay so it will be trapped inside and once trapped that digestive enzyme will slowly break down all the body parts of that insect if, mm -hmm. except uh, lignin and chitin so mm -hmm. that's very hard to break okay. so that uh, digestion process will be more uh, uh, rapidified by this microorganism mm -hmm. once after uh, it is digested from this point all the nutrient will be absorbed by the plant uh -huh. you can have a closer look here okay from this point the nutrient will be uh, completely taken by the plant and it will be utilized this modification uh, has happened in this plant just because this grow in a very bog media bog means like uh, the union between the water and the land in the fresh water lakes and all mm. the soil will be very humid and moist uh -huh. under that condition the common plants can't grow in the water uh -huh. locked condition where nutrient will be very deficient uh -huh. so this grows in a very nutrient deficient media so you don't you should never fertilize this plant you should never give fertilizer mm -hmm. so if you give fertilizer the plant will not produce pitcher mm -hmm. so this is not the main part of nutrition uptake mm -hmm. root will also take nutrition but whenever root has nutrition it will take mm -hmm. if this is if this new media is created in deficient nutrition then it produces this type of pitchers okay. so and one more difficulty in this plant cultivation is this will uh, either the plant will be male or female Mm -hmm. so maturity of the plant takes around uh, 10 to 14 years in non native condition oh. so after 14 years we, uh, when the first flowering happens in this plant we can uh, will be uh, able to identify if it is a male or female mm -hmm. so if we identify it as a male and we'll have to look for a female plant okay. so only then the pollination will happen between uh, seeds to produce seeds uh -huh. in that also there is a difficulty that male has to happen first flowering and mm -hmm. then the female so that the pollen grains is collected and help hand pollinated to the female okay. and then the seeds will be formed in the female flower mm. if female flower happen first and then the male flower the female receptivity will be, will be over and the seeds will not be able to produce oh, oh. so it is very hard to propagate them with cuttings or leaf pullings or anything it has to be only pollinated to seeds See, only okay. so this is around a two and a half year old plant Oh, this is only two and a half year old plant. This is uh, in two and a half year old. Other plants will grow like twenty, thirty feet and all. Yeah. But this will. This is a very slow growing plant. This is okay. two and a half year old plant. Uh huh. So, I, uh, in search of these plants, I had recently visited Indonesia mm -hmm. to, uh, to study their habitats and all. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, we explored a lot of uh, carnivorous plants, the tropical pitcher plants like Rafflesiana. Mm -hmm. Nepanthus rafflesiana okay. and uh, uh, this Gaya Buddha, all those uh, uh, plants we were identified in the Sumatra forest. Mm -hmm. So, um, so do we need to water it or? Yeah, no? this has uh, the one more difficulty is this plant can't be kept in the outdoor condition, just like I'm keeping it here. Uh -huh. Either this has to be cultivated in a very humid region, just like our Western Ghats, Kerala, mm -hmm. or tropical humid condition, okay. where a lot of humidity is in the environment. If you are cultivating this plant in a dry region like uh, uh, bangalore or even the bagepalli mm -hmm. this uh, trop, uh, eastern dry zone region mm -hmm. i don't know how about in your location where the dry zones and all if it is like your humidity is less than 50 less than 60% and all this mm -hmm. plant won't grow this okay. will quickly dry up in within hours uh -huh. so for uh, that type of uh, conditions if you want to grow this plant it's just a easy thing mm -hmm. just a take a polythene cover wrap it up and close it tightly mm. 
to so maintain the, the yeah, humidity. Yeah, inside the humidity yeah. will be maintained and okay. the plant will be cultivated. Uh -huh. Or if you want to create a display out of this plant in your home or in your mm. office or in your schools, colleges and all, mm. to create an uh, awareness in the schools and all, this can be planted. Mm. Under that condition, we have to build a small terrarium. Just like uh, you build a showcase in your house yeah. for your artifacts and all, yeah. the similar glass structure has to be done. Mm. Where inside the uh, inside the glass container, if you keep this plant, there will be humidity content, and that will be more than sufficient for oh. this plant to thrive. So, how do you uh, tell the difference between a male and female plant? So, what is this now? So, uh, unless until this produces a first flower, that uh. is after 10 to 14 years, oh we can't God. say this is a male or female. Okay. So, that is a difficulty of propagating this plant mm. and that is why it is rare and exotic. Okay. So, it takes us 10 to 14 years to identify male mm. and once it is identified the sex ratio of this plant, then we have to arrange a female or arrange a male for the same species and we have to pollinate between the same species mm -hmm. to get a pure species. Mm -hmm. So if we pollinate with other plant, example we have Ventrata now, mm -hmm. so if we have uh, Nepanthes uh, Ampullaria, then if we pollinate Ampullaria female with Nepanthes Ventrata male, the mixing happens between two different species and the next mm -hmm. generation whatever we obtain mm -hmm. will be of two different characters. Two uh -huh. different characters will be mixed together, that is okay. hybridization. Okay. So even that can be done. But anyhow, the plant, we, uh, we have to identify male and female after 7 to 10 years only. So, Chepar Kadandi Chandan Garu is the only custom of the Nimanam Kotta Mokani create Chali and Te, Mamul custom Gadu, is the Padnal Padihenel Tiskuntadanta, flowering Ravadaniki, so the propagation go to Chele Mantana, and the Kanidi, rare and exotic kind. So, Ilanti, rare variety Mikaval and Kunta Mitapakunda. Sadhika Plant Studio website ki vedli mere to order ches kochu. Nin dinik saman nichein wali Instagram details gani website details ani nin description le iskano. Yaor kena kawal ante tapko kunda check cheyin. Mane next plant toche si orchid plant andi. Ipur din guri inch gorda ani nadi kan kunna mu chandan yar. So this is an Oncidium species. This is called Dancing Doll or Oncidium. This is a hybrid from uh, some of the South Asian countries. So this plant has been uh, with me like uh, six to eight years. Mm -hmm. Then I propagated them and I transferred to a plant, uh, planter, decorative planter for display. Mm -hmm. so fortunately, when uh, we are shooting only, we have a bloom now. Yeah. So, it's one of my favorite flower. You can see the detail of the inflorescence. So, once after flowering, this flower stays for more than one month. Oh. As, as fresh as... Uh, mm -hmm. This is almost... Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is almost a two and a half week old plant, flower. Oh. So again, it will be there for another two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. So this is one of a uh, uh, one of a favorite plant for all the plant collectors. These orchids yeah. and all. Yeah. So in uh, plant uh, genera and all, uh, the orchid is the highest uh, species or in the existing in the world now. Mm -hmm. So there are around 36 different species of uh, orchids available. Mm -hmm. In that around uh, India hosts for more than 15,000 species of orchids. Mm -hmm. So orchid collection is a separate hobby for uh, people yeah, now. Yeah. So there are people like will commonly collect these dendrobiums. That's the most easiest uh, orchid, orchid to grow. Okay. And uh, few will collect phalaenopsis. Mm -hmm. And this uh, Oncidium is one of other free easiest uh, variety mm -hmm. to grow. Mm -hmm. Other than that, there are like Bulbophyllum phalaenopsis, rare varieties like uh, Catastratums. All these things also are available in our website. We'll be shortly uh, uploading those uh, mm -hmm. plants in our website in a separate category. Okay. Because people can order from there. Even I'm more crazy about these orchids and all. Okay. I usually collect it from my personal collections. Then whichever is extra or whichever I get, uh, source it from outside, I get them and uh, put it on the website. If you have a rare variety, you can display the chubin. You can have information about different collections of orchids. You can have a video on the orchids. You can have a video on the orchids. Can you tell me about this one? So, this is one of a philodendron plant. This is called philodendron billete. Mm -hmm. So, in philodendrons, it's very common nowadays for okay. indoor plants and all. There are uh, other plants yeah, and all. Yeah, usually but see them like indoor plants will be Yeah, this right? is for yeah. indoor. Uh. So, but this philodendron billete is a very specific uh, collector's plant now. Mm. So, these are going to produce like uh, large uh, leaves. This is a very small sapling now. Uh -huh. So, this, uh, this leaf going to grow up to 3 to 4 feet in length. Okay. So when you plant it in a big pot. Okay. So this is a collector's philodendron. So similarly, there are other philodendrons which are available at 100, 150, mm -hmm. even from starts from 50, 25 also. Mm -hmm. But this will be around uh, 900 to 1500 rupees on the costing. Oh. Because it is a new variety in philodendron. Mm -hmm. New and exotic now. 
चंदन गरु दो आई एम अ प्लांट लवर आई एम आई डोंट हैव एनी नॉलेज अबाउट दिस सक्यूल एंड्स और ऑर्नामेंटल्स और सम दिस रेयर एक्सोटिक प्लांट्स एंड ऑल सो आई जस्ट वांट टू आस्क यू अ फ्यू क्वेश्चंस अबाउट ऑल दिस बिकॉज़ पीपल लाइक मी हु हैव लॉट्स ऑफ डाउट्स अबाउट ऑल दिस थिंग्स आई शुड वांट टू क्लियर आई लाइक टू क्लियर ऑल दोस क्वेश्चंस एंड आंसर्स फॉर देम सो फर्स्ट टेल मी सो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ऑर्नामेंटल एंड सक्यूल एंड okay uh, see ornamental plants means uh, it's all about the decorative plants it's uh-huh. not uh, the common plants and all see there are in plant genera it is a classification for uh, landscape gardening ornamental mm-hmm. plants the clear definition is the plant which is having the value of ornaments like uh, beautification value okay. that is ornamental plants uh-huh. with respect to succulents it's a category in the ornamental plants mm-hmm. so this is a succulent mm-hmm. this is a category in an ornamental plant okay so these are xeric plants zirik zirik we say it as zirik plants because this grows in desert condition uh-huh. or a sandy or extreme uh, temperature or extreme conditions okay so this succulents what people do is like see that is a uh, knowledge we give from sadika plant studio we don't sell so if you go and ask for a uh, indoor plant in a nursery then whatever the plants they have it in stock they'll change it to indoor category okay. so even if you ask for a succulent yeah they say this is an indoor keep it on the table uh-huh. so even if you ask for a jade they say it keep it in the indoor mm. but uh, these plants we have to understand first firstly we have to understand the habitat of the plant which grows in native like assume if uh, the succulents is growing in australia in a desert mm. how can we keep it in indoor in a bangalore mm. where mm. australian desert temperature reaches more than 45 to 50 degree mm. this will be uh, growing in australian desert under the shade of some trees or canopy mm-hmm. or cactus tree or other trees there will be acacia or anything mm-hmm. under that canopy under diffuse sunlight under extreme temperature this grows mm. we can't keep this in indoor mm. see I, uh, now people can relate so uh, most of the succulents whatever you guys buy uh, will end up dying uh, within a few weeks mm. and you can see you can also see the succulent is flat and con- uh, i mean dwarf now mm. if you keep it indoor you can see the elongation of the stem and uh, there will be different spacing between the leaves uh-huh. that happens because of photoperiodism that mm. is lack of sunlight mm-hmm. so when there is a lack of sunlight the plant internodes elongates so internode means you can uh, see this one uh, you can see this plant itself now for the reference mm-hmm. so this is called internode so this is a leaf and this is a leaf so between two consecutive leaf the space is called an internode mm-hmm. so that internode elong- elongates that will become long when there is a deficient in sunlight okay the same thing happens with your sac- uh, succulents jade and all when you mm-hmm. directly transfer those plants in indoor condition that will slowly developing stem true mm-hmm. stem so that is because of low light that is a uh-huh. symptom you need to identify between differentiating the plants okay so they definitely need sunlight yeah like that shaded. is d- diffuse sunlight okay D- diffuse sunlight means under a tree canopy you can uh, mm-hmm. see there will be a indirect sunlight mm-hmm. that is required so mm-hmm. ideally if you are placing them in your uh, garden that should be a east or west facing uh, just in the window sill or balcony mm-hmm. if you transfer even a single feet from your window sill mm-hmm. there will be chance, more chances of that plant getting uh, killed Okay. What is the criteria of selecting plants when you go to a nursery? So that is one more very important question uh, I need to address. So I regularly, uh, when I'm doing a workshop or when we are uh, giving a guest lectures and all, this is a one point uh, where I speak very often. Mm-hmm. So you have to understand what type of plant you are going to select and which is the place you are going to uh, position your yeah. plant in your indoor or in your garden. so uh, let's assume uh, i have a house and i need a plant for my uh, indoor tea, to- tea pot table mm-hmm. and one for my bedroom mm-hmm. and one for my kitchen mm-hmm. so kitchen there will be a very minimum light coming into the kitchen so mm-hmm. we need to understand it's a very low light plant yeah. so in, even in a living room there nowadays there are uh, skylight and uh, doors and windows are too broad and there is a uh, light coming in also but still we need to understand the uh lighting of a in, uh, living room condition mm. and one more is for uh, assume let's keeping in a balcony or anything mm. so these are the position we need to uh, okay. uh, finalize first yeah. then when we visit nursery mm. so you will see a polyhouse in a nursery mm. we will see a shade net house yeah. and you will see a outdoor plant yeah, correct, correct. so they will be positioning plants in different places the plants which are positioned in a uh, polyhouse yeah. are completely tropical plants mm. the most of the plants those kept in a polyhouse thrives only in a tropical condition mm. they require more humidity mm. 
they require diffused sunlight mm. and uh, warm temperature to grow mm. so under cold condition they will uh, definitely be dead okay. so under shade net house that green color mm. shade net what they put yeah. and under which they whatever the plants they keep mm. those are uh, low light plants mm. so they will use 90% shade net that is green or black mm. so under that condition grown plants grown under that condition will be suitable for your low light conditions mm. the plants which are kept uh outside mm. not in the shade direct sunlight exposed mm. those plants are compulsory for your uh, outdoor condition outdoor they require like more sunlight yeah terrace, that's a very plants, easy yeah. way of identifying okay. but there is a loophole here also so mm. what the nursery men even they are not technically knowledgeable what they do mm. is they shuffle up the order they keep it indoor outdoor i mean uh, poly or shade net or outside they, even they'll be doing the trial mm-hmm. and error method mm-hmm. in order to grow the plants in a very quicker way they keep mm-hmm. it in the even outdoor plants will be kept in the polyos uh-huh. even the succulents will be kept in the polyos in order to protect from the rainfall and okay. even from birds and all okay. so you have to prevent the diseases and insect infestation mm-hmm. they keep it in the polyos that doesn't mean these are for indoor mm-hmm. they are for low light mm-hmm. outdoor mm-hmm. so even in polyos you can see them they will not ke- keep it under the shade net mm-hmm. they will keep it under the direct white shade net or exposed in the polyos mm-hmm. so while identifying succulents which is healthy or not you can mm-hmm. just look at the spacing between the leaves mm-hmm. if it is elongated the, mm-hmm. it is exposed to low light and it will not survive okay. so this is a very healthy succulent what i am showing mm-hmm. so this is how a succulent should be okay and even the lower leaf see mm-hmm. this is a mature leaf so i'll just pull out for you see okay when you touch a succulent so it's hard now it's turgid yeah. Yeah. now it's healthy uh-huh. if it is flaccid Mm. it's like expanding it, it's not it, now it's cutting so it's healthy mm. if it doesn't cut if it bends easily that's mm. not healthy okay that's a way you need to identify a plant and uh, whenever you visit don't uh, pull out a leaf and try breaking yeah. that, yeah, don't do that just <laughs> press the leaves and t- see the flexibility and uh, turgidity of the leaf you can touch it and feel it yeah please don't pull them <laughs> so actually what happened last time i brought some indoor plants to grow so usually we like uh, keeping plants in front of the door on the front door mm-hmm. so there i'll be getting minimal sunlight like okay. uh, i would say like in summers only that to uh, like for half an hour one hour i'll get sunlight mm-hmm. but um, i don't know what happened uh, what went wrong there my plants never survived okay. i have i have tried two three times bringing indoor plants which they said Got they'll it. survive completely under shade but they didn't survive so actually what happened there? got it uh see uh, out of my experience i can tell the uh, failure is in the media what we call substrate uh-huh. okay. it's not the failure of the plant growing uh-huh. there okay so if the plant is killed that mm-hmm. is a failure of a substrate there should be a root infection uh-huh. there should be a problematic media what you have used in your pots mm-hmm. or even the failure of the pot also mm-hmm. see whatever the pot we choose you can see here Mm. so there is a drain hole mm. the drain so drain hole has to be broad okay. in order to drain out the soil and yeah. there should be a bottom and uh, surface aeration also mm. unfortunately uh, the uh, you have planted it in a red soil with a very minimum organic matter and there will be a water logging issue mm-hmm. so when you keep it uh, keep your plants in a shade with a big container uh, the whole 365 days there will be a moisture in the uh, pot mm. it will never dry out so when there is a moisture 365 days there are uh, high chances of uh, getting your bad bacteria and microbes that's uh, problematic microbes mm. that will uh, damage the root system that will hinder the growth those anaerobic bacteria will kill the plant mm. so the main uh, easiest way to rectify that problem is creating your pro- uh, proper soil as substrate mm. that has uh, we have done a couple of videos in our instagram mm-hmm. uh, the way of uh, doing your uh, indoor garden mix or potting mix mm. so i can just show you a demo of our potting mix here okay so this is a potting mix what we use mm-hmm. we have used paddy husk yeah red soil okay cocoa peat uh-huh. charcoal and uh, sand also mm-hmm. so that is the reason i'll show see this is very lightweight Mm, yeah it's not even heavy mm. i can just catch it if you pour a liter of water also this will retain only 60% water in the media mm. and rest will be left out from the drain hole okay. so there will be never never a overwatering for this plant mm-hmm. so the media is standardized in such a way that for different species it will hold different quantity of water okay. so this will requires moisture only soil moisture not mm. the water logging so what we do is we we have added more porous substrate so that 
minimal watering will be hold that is up to 60% rest will be thrown out of the pot mm. so that is the reason this plant never dies this is mm. two year old plant still surviving that is the reason okay. and uh, the regular gardeners what they do is they just get the red soil mix it with the cow manure or uh, sheep manure and uh, a few part of cocoa pit and just plant it yeah. so if you can't even penetrate your finger into your mm. pot see i'll show you this one so this has a different composition of media you can see mm -hmm. so this is red soil but for, i can insert the whole finger in it mm. so you can see yeah. the whole finger has been inserted here but uh, unfortunately the uh, regular gardeners what you see or your home garden plants you can never insert your finger into the pot because that mm. will become very hard pan mm. so under that condition beneficial microbes won't go there or mm. cultivate there which will uh, help in loosening the media mm. the bad bacteria that is anaerobic bacteria cultivate and kill the kill your plant that's the reason mm. if the plant is dying out of low light it will shed all the leaves but okay. still the plant will be living it will okay. never die okay. under low light plant will never die it okay. will be surviving but mm. in a very uh, uh, restricted manner mm. all the leaves will be shed out mm. and only the tip will be healthy yeah, so that is a low light deficiency mm. but when it is have uh, when your plant is having a problem in your media the plant immediately dies off okay. that is called dying back కరెక్ట్ అండి యాక్చువల్ గా అప్పుడు నేను చేసిన మిస్టేక్ ఏంటండి ఇప్పుడు చందంగా చెప్తే నాకు గుర్తొచ్చింది మేము ఇండోర్ ప్లాంట్స్ కొనుక్కున్న తర్వాత మేము ఏం చేసామంటే లోకల్ వేరే నర్సరీకి వెళ్ళాము అక్కడ కొన్ని ప్లాంటర్స్ తీసుకున్నాం అనమాట బయట రూమ్ దగ్గర మెయిన్ డోర్ దగ్గర డెకరేషన్ అని చెప్పేసి కొన్ని ప్లాంటర్స్ తీసుకున్నాము సో ఆ నర్సరీ వాడు ఏం చేశాడంటే నేను పాట్ మట్టి కూడా నేనే ఫిల్ చేసేస్తాను మేడం అని వాడు అక్కడ రెడ్ సాయిల్ ఫిల్ చేశాడు అనమాట సో అదే మేబీ ఇప్పుడు అదే మిస్టేక్ అయింది నాకు ఇప్పుడు దాకా అర్థం కాలేదు ఎందుకు అన్నిసార్లు ప్రతిసారి ఎందుకు ఫెయిల్ అవుతున్నాను నేను వాళ్ళకి పెరుగుతున్నాయి కదా మనకెందుకు పెరగట్లేదు అనుకుంటున్నాను సో నేను ఏంటంటే మీడియంని ప్రాపర్గా సెలెక్ట్ చేసుకోలేదు అనమాట నేను ఓన్లీ రెడ్ సాయిల్లో ఆ మొక్కల్ని పెట్టేశాను నేను అంటే మెయిన్ నేను అవుటర్ ప్లాంటర్స్ మీద నేను కాన్సన్ట్రేట్ చేశాను కానీ మీడియం మీద నేను కాన్సన్ట్రేట్ చేయలేదు అనమాట సో ఇది చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్ అండి మీరు ఎప్పుడైనా ఈ సెక్యులెంట్స్ని కానీ మీరు ఇండోర్ ప్లాంట్స్ని కానీ పెంచుకోవాలనుకుంటున్నప్పుడు మీరు ప్రాపర్ మీడియాని సెలెక్ట్ చేసుకొని అందులో మాత్రం ఆ మొక్కల్ని పెంచుకోవాలి అప్పుడే బాగా వస్తాయి సో ఇప్పుడు ఇక్కడ కొన్ని మాత్రమే మనం చూసాం కదండి ఇప్పుడు మనం స్టూడియోకి అయితే వెళ్ళిపోదాము అక్కడైతే ఇంకా చాలా చాలా రేర్ కలెక్షన్ ప్లాంట్స్ అయితే రెడీగా పెట్టారు చందన్ గారు వాటి గురించి కూడా తెలుసుకుందాం సో ఇప్పుడైతే మీకు ఇంకా అదర్ కలెక్షన్ కూడా చూపిస్తానని చెప్పాను కదండి అదైతే చూపించేస్తాను దానికన్నా ముందు ఇందాక మనం మాట్లాడుకున్నట్టు మనం మీడియం అంటే మనం ఈ పర్టికులర్ మొక్కలు పెట్టడానికి ఎటువంటి సాయిల్ మిక్చర్ చేసుకుంటే మనకు మొక్కలు బాగా వస్తాయో చూపిస్తానని చెప్పాను కదా సో ఇప్పుడు మనం ఆ సాయిల్ మిక్చర్ అనేది ఎలా చేస్తారో చూద్దాం సో ఫస్ట్ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు టేక్ రెడ్ సాయిల్ so as a major component see uh, there is a different ratio of utilizing uh, all the elements but uh, initially we, I, i'll show you a generalized media so here you assume we are uh, using one part of red soil so this is one part of red soil so along with that so red soil is a uh, core uh, starting material so this contains all the beneficial microorganism nutrient everything will be in the red soil itself so for this we are going to enrich the media enrichment is done by adding organic materials this is vermicompost so vermicompost we are going to use half the ratio of soil mm -hmm. so if the soil is one ratio red soil half the ratio we are going to use vermicompost and if you have access to leaf compost that is uh, rotten or uh, decomposed leaf so that you can add half ratio so vermicompost if not available you can use the cow manure or any organic matter so one is one ratio of soil half ratio of uh, vermicompost or cow manure and half ratio of leaf, leaf compost mm. after that so for water holding composition we are going to use cocoa peat see cocoa peat doesn't contain any nutrient this is a just a inert substrate this is for water holding and this is for plant anchorage and to build the soil texture mm. this doesn't contain any nutrient so if anyone growing only plants in cocoa peat it is not it's not of no use and adding cocoa peat and manure also mm. will not give you any uh, yield so it's better to add soil and other elements along with that so half the ratio one ratio soil and half the ratio of cocoa peat we are using and along with that in order to uh, supplement some other micronutrients and all it's better to add silica that is your sand so this is very important that you use only river sand not mm -hmm. the beach mm -hmm. sand beach sand contains salinity this okay. has to, uh, river sand has to be utilized i'm just using a small quantity of river sand to uh, create that texture mm -hmm. so this is a generalized media composition what we have done now we are going to add the 
lightweight textures. So we are going to reduce the weight of this media by adding pop soil. This is clay balls. This is also available on our website. You can check. This is a burnt clay. This is a very lightweight substrate. This is usually used in hydroponics and this in uh, plantation and all. Now we are going to add a handful of this, uh, like one, uh, one or two handful of, as much as required you can add. But in order to reduce the weight, uh, if you use more quantity of this pop soil, the weight of the media will be reduced more and the uh, water draining capacity will be more. So I am going to add a quarter of this uh, pop soil. Along with that, in order to bind the soil and pop soil, we are going to use paddy husk. This is uh, the rice husk mm. or paddy husk. Yeah, yeah. So this one quarter of this thing also will be added here. Mm. Along with that, we use charcoal. See, there are different sizes of charcoal. So this, when you are using big size planter, we have to use a bolder charcoal. But as this small size char, uh, planter, we are going to use a few parts of charcoal in this. So benefit of charcoal is this will be a uh, like hosting place or a cultural culture media for microbes. So mm -hmm. in this porous nature, th this charcoal will be porous and it holds water and air. So in this package, the beneficial microorganism will be growing. So most of the beneficial microorganisms are aerobic bacteria, which means they thrive in the aerated condition. Mm -hmm. Under non-aerated condition, anaerobic bacteria, those are very harmful bacteria. So now you have to carefully mix this media. So thoroughly we are going to mix this media. You can see the texture now. So it's mixed completely. We have to mix it along with all those media mixtures and all. After mixing, you take a pot and the uh, ideal pot should have a broad drain hole. See, you can see the size of the drain hole. It should not be like very small one where often it will be clogged or blocked. So it's better to have a better drain hole. Over that, you can use this geotextile membrane. So who are ordering uh, substrate from our nursery, we are going to give them a uh, free drain uh, geotextile membrane. We are going to place it, uh, place a geotextile membrane on this uh, drain hole. It prevents the media uh, leaching out from the pot and it only allows the uh, water to drain out of it. So now we are going to fill it with, fill the pot with this uh, special media. So now you can see, uh, filled, filled till the brim. And if you are plotting, so it, it is advisable to uh, prepare this type of media water it and like uh, moisten it and store it in a uh, I mean uh, shaded place so that uh, microbes will be cultured and this media mm -hmm. will be getting matured okay. so that media will be more efficient mm. so this is a fresh media we have utilized but mm. it is advised to uh, store the media for longer time in a moist condition to grow this type of uh, indoor plants and all now you can see the pot is very lightweight yeah. the ceramic is weighing more than the mm. media what we are yeah. so if you compare this with a red soil yeah this just this quantity half the quantity of this pot soil is weighing more mm. so when you add water the water will be absorbed by this red soil completely mm. which means the saturated water will weigh the pot of the saturated uh, water along with saturated water will weigh more so that is not ideal so mm. now this is an ideal mix mm. so in order to have succulents cactus everything this is a general media mm -hmm. if, but if you want to specify like uh, specific medias you should alter the ratios of different materials if you are going okay. for orchid, then don't add soil mm. and fine cocoa pit. Rest everything you can add. Mm. If you are going for like aeroids, mm. which means uh, anthuriums or uh, the uh, any other philodendron species and all, this is ideal. But you can reduce little the soil quantity and you can add more of uh, this type of grits and charcoal. That mm. is more ideal because they will have aerial roots. Mm. So the penetration should be more. Okay. So in this potting mixture, the root zone will be established throughout the pot. Mm. But in mm. the traditional methods whatever you use the rooting will happen at the bottom because okay. aeration will be there from the drain hole the root matting will happen there mm. and a few rooting will be on the top rest of this space will be empty mm. that is the reason plant doesn't grow too big or uh, it doesn't mm. grow properly yeah. and even damage will be more okay. so i'll just show you a demo of uh, watering in this pot how the watering water okay. holding everything will be done you can see he's going to water on this pot The whole water will be completely percolated into the full media. There will not be any even a single water stagnation. Just hold on. So 
the slowly the water gets completely absorbed in the media and the excess will be coming out from the bottom hak so as it is fresh media it will saturate after some time so once after such now you can see the, the water from the bottom drain is coming out so there will not be any excess water holding into the media surface or damaging the plant whole of the water will be completely drained out after this so you can see the water here is completely moving inside the planter itself it will be circulated all the parts సో మనం సాయిల్ మీడియం ఎలా చేసుకోవాలో చూసాం కదండి ఇప్పుడు మీకు ఇంకా వాళ్ళ దగ్గర ఉన్న కలెక్షన్ ఏమేమి ప్లాంట్స్ ఉన్నాయో చూపిస్తానని చెప్పాను కదా సో ఇక్కడ మనకు ఫస్ట్ ప్లాంట్ వచ్చేసి ఇదండి సార్ కెన్ యూ టెల్ మీ అబౌట్ దిస్ ఇస్ ఆంతోరియం క్రిస్టలైనం దిస్ అ వెరీ డిమాండెడ్ ప్లాంట్ రైట్ నౌ సో ప్రీ కోవిడ్ దిస్ ప్లాంట్స్ వర్ ఆఫ్ నౌ డిమాండ్ అట్ ఆల్ దిస్ ఇస్ అన్ ఆంతోరియం ప్లాంట్ ఓకే బట్ దిస్ ఇస్ నాట్ గోన్ గివ్ యూ అన్ అట్రాక్టివ్ ఫ్లవర్ దిస్ ఇస్ ఆంతోరియం క్రిస్టలినం ఫ్లవర్ ఇట్ డజంట్ లుక్ గుడ్ అట్ ఆల్ సో దిస్ విల్ నాట్ హావ్ ఎనీ కలర్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ విల్ బి వెరీ డల్ బట్ ద ప్యాటర్న్ ఆఫ్ లీఫ్ ఇస్ మోర్ అట్రాక్టివ్ దిస్ ఆర్ ఆల్ బ్రాడ్ లీఫ్ టు ప్లాంట్స్ సో వెన్ ద ట్రెండ్ ఆఫ్ సౌత్ ఏషియన్ షిఫ్టెడ్ టు ద అమెరికన్ ట్రెండ్ సో యుఎస్ ట్రెండ్ దెన్ ద ప్లాంట్ లవర్ స్టార్టెడ్ లైకింగ్ ద బ్రాడ్ లీఫ్ లార్జ్ లీఫ్ ప్లాంట్స్ and all mm-hmm. so under that category this uh, anthurium crystallinum foliage varieties lies mm-hmm. so in the same there are a lot of other species called anthurium varroconium that is called queen anthurium mm-hmm. vichy that is called anthurium king mm-hmm. so those are highly prized anthuriums other than that there are uh, uh, different anthuriums like uh, vetterifolium vichy all these things are very expensive and very rare mm-hmm. one of that collection is this foliage anthurium crystallinum mm-hmm. so we'll show you other species as well okay so we also have a wide collections of succulents and cactus so uh, we usually import succulents from china so there are some trans shippers where, through which uh, we import uh, these succulents ex- uh, exclusively from china you can see the collections these are all there are some regular succulents mixed in the combo but you can see these are little rare this is a lettuce uh, succulent and this is uh, one more uh, different uh, i mean uh, rare species of succulents and this is a haworthia so these are very expensive in india right now and this is a aloe species or haworthia species itself you can see the texture of this all these are little exotic and these are collectible succulent plants we have in collection right now and uh, with respect to succulents uh, common myth what we want to solve uh, is these are not indoor if any nurseryman is promoting or giving you a succulent plant to place it in indoor it's totally wrong you have to maximum you can keep it near the window sill or in the balcony never indoor this mm-hmm. don't never is these plants never thrive in indoor and mm-hmm. particularly with respect to the soil never take succulents plant it in the uh, red soil or the regular soil this will never grow plant it in the pure sand either you plant it in the pure sand or sand mixed with cocoa peat or sand mix, mixed with uh, manure in one is to one ratio in a shallow pot the pot depth should not be more than 6 to 8 inches so that when mm-hmm. you whenever you water the water complete water has to drain out and before watering you need to understand you have to press the leaf if the uh, leaf is like uh, very turgid and strong then don't water it if you see the leaf is like flaccid like soft then you water the plant so that is the easiest care and maintenance of succulents and uh, one of the easiest way to maintain succulents is just give them bright light low water there is and one more thing the watering frequency if they say like weekly once weekly twice that is not how you have to measure the watering in plant any plants so watering any in any plants you have to visually check the pot if if you see the moisture in the pot don't water it and uh, by just placing your finger in a uh, one inch or one and a half inch depth if you find moisture mm. don't water the plant if the whole one and a half of uh, inch of the soil is dry then uh, go for watering so one more thing uh, there is a concept called vastu plants in uh, or the good luck plants with respect to plants whatever they market it so one such category of plants are these uh, jade plants so they often say this that uh, keeping this plant in your uh, indoor will uh, give you good fortune and good luck and all they call it as money tree or uh, good luck tree good luck plant vastu mm-hmm. feng shui all those fancy uh, terms and all but for me all this all the plants are with respect to uh, vastu they are good fortunate plants only so there is nothing like uh, 
cactus are not uh, they are uh, not auspicious mm. and these are auspicious no controversies in that so but uh, there is one uh, uh, main issue i want to address here so jade again these are from the desert or zeri condition these are not tropical plants or low light plants to be kept indoor on table top and even after keeping these plants for a week in uh, indoor and uh, just uh, putting them for sunlight for one hour or one and a half hour or one day that won't make much difference it is about the total duration of exposure in a single day so that that is what matters so mm-hmm. light hours is like it's not in a weekly once or weekly twice you're keeping in the sunlight it is mm-hmm. like in a 24 hours hour cycle how many duration of light is exposed on this plant that is how uh, the light hour is mentioned uh-huh. for a plant so uh-huh. the cycle is 24 hours mm-hmm. so these plants are also good uh, semi shade plants like it is better you keep it in the window sill or where your bright or indirect sunlight is there so like uh, all the day not like uh, half a day sunlight is there and half a day is completely dark the plant won't uh, survive mm-hmm. uh, the main symptoms is the leaf will start dropping and the mm-hmm. plant becomes completely naked and it will not mm-hmm. show any new growth mm-hmm. and there will be if the low light is there then the stem elongation happens okay. so this uh, i don't have any controversy with respect to good luck or bad luck but keeping this plant is obviously a good fortune but not in the indoor keep it in somewhere the bright light is there mm. so this is a uh, elephant bush jade this is gold finger jade and this is silver dollar jade this is a silver dollar jade and this is a golden finger jade and this is a regular crassula jade so there are uh, three different types of oh. jade this is singonium alba uh, in singonium there are different different species you have uh, seen so one such is singonium is the pink singonium this one so this is a pink singonium this is for vertical garden or indoor pot table top plants and all but this is a singonium alba this is a very good plant for a uh, indoor table, table top as well as a moss stick plant so this plants grows up to 6 to 8 feet depending on the length of this moss stick so if you give support to a longer length so this coils around the moss stick and it grows this is one of a very beautiful plant and it has a very beautiful variegation so because of this white variegation this is called singonium alba and very easy to maintain plant so this is one of the rarest fern variety called rabbit foot fern so this is one of the collectors choice i'll show you a interesting part of this uh, plant so you can see the roots so it comes out of the pot like this these are aer- aerial roots of this fern so just like a runner if you touch and feel the leaves it resembles like a rabbit foot that is why it is called rabbit foot fern so you can see how this beautiful this roots are and even the plant has a very beautiful leaf texture so this is a leaf texture of this plant so that is why this is called rabbit foot fern so is one of the rarest and very uh, uh, high in demand uh, fern variety in the indian market so we have a very few collections left out for uh, sales now so soon we are going to update in the website do watch it for uh, purchase again this is uh, mentioned for vastu this is called a chinese money tree or pachera so you can see it's a braided so two different plants are in one pot you can see the pattern how uh, beautifully it has been uh, uh, made out of these two plants so this is one of a very good plant for indoor this thrives in a low light condition uh this is uh, similar to a bonsai or dwarf plant which doesn't grow too big and the height of the plant is also very less you can uh, change the pot into a decorative planter and you can have this in your table top or uh, uh, any desk or anything but the thing is uh, this has a very weak or uh, I mean what to say a uh, very shallow root system so you need not uh, repot it once in a year or once in 6 months or anything it stays for like 4 to 5 years in a simil- same pot just need to maintain the moisture in the media that's it this is called chinese money tree or pachera we have a uh, uh, exclusive collections of edible herbs uh, all these uh, italian basil rosemary lavender oregano and uh, different varieties of mint stevia all these things so to begin with this is rosemary so you often uh, have seen the uh, italian cuisines where we use this uh, rosemary for garnishing and in the barbecues and all so another one this is called sage this is also an edible herb so we have different varieties of mint this is a bergamot and uh, this is a this is a bergamot and this is lemon mint 
so this mint uh, like smells like a lemon flavor so this is called lemon mint and we have a cat mint so even this flower and uh, leaf is edible and we have a stevia this is a sugar plant so the taste of the stevia uh, leaves will be like sugary so it will be sweet so that is why it is called uh, stevia and we have another mint so this is a uh, uh, spearmint so this is something like a chewing gum flavor so it's called spearmint so we have different varieties of mint like apple mint as well and we have uh, italian basils and chives also garlic and uh, onion chives so we have this type of uh, uh, edible herb combinations we sell it in combo as well as in the individual plants you can order online the herbal section so this is a dwarf orange plant or chinese orange this is this will be like very very sour not uh, sweet in taste this can be used for ornamental gardening uh, along with oranges so you can see the plant is like uh, hardly uh, one six to eight inches and will ha is having around three four to eight uh, fruits now and this is a all season bearing uh, orange so this i'm telling repeatedly telling this fruits you can't have it like directly even if it is after ripening also ripening also you can't have it directly you can make pickles out of it you can use the juice for uh, flavoring and all but this is an ornamental come edible uh, chinese orange plant so this doesn't grow too big hardly uh, Four to five feet uh, of orange tree will give it, uh, it will yield you around uh, more than three thousand fruits per year. So this is one uh, uh, orange tree we have propagated from our own uh, farm. So now uh, what you are seeing is a pineapple plant. So it is mixed with another succulent as well. But this is a pineapple leaf. So this is a dwarf pineapple. This is exclusively for ornamental purpose. You can have this in your house hedge where. Uh, 365 days you will be getting this pineapple fruits this is exclusively ornamental you can see the size reference it's hardly of uh, my thumb size uh, fruit and this is edible also but uh, it looks better when you uh, use them as an ornamental plant so likewise we have uh, two to three different types of ornamental pineapple plant we have thornless pineapple and other pineapple varieties also so now what you are seeing is a tamarind bonsai this is around 18 year old tamarind bonsai what we have done now so you can see the stem uh, the trunk texture and all so this is currently it's not in blooming condition but shortly we are expecting uh, fruits in that we have uh, just integrated some more rare plants this is a spanish moss so what you are seeing is an air plant this is uh, this air plant is called spanish moss i'll just show you just cut it here and you place it in any location where uh, humidity is there or moisture is there and it will grow into a long strand so this is a air plant called spanish moss but definitely this won't uh, thrive in the hot and uh, dry climate it requires humidity or you need to spray it daily and we have one more air plant called tillandsia ionata so this is called this is also an air plant you can see there are a lot of pups coming out of from the mother plant so the speciality of this plant is once the mother plant gives out flowers this will die off the mother plant dies allowing multiple baby pups or the tillandsia pups to rise from the mother plant now we are seeing all the baby pups after uh, the mother plant is flowered this baby pups is grown so we have same way we have one more air plant called tillandsia junkia so agencia so this is also an air plant but different species but the texture of the leaf and the growth habit is little different so you can see this one this is tillandsia junkia all you need to know, do is just hang this plant this doesn't have any root system this is already a year old plant you just need to hang it in a in your window sill or just near the bathroom window or anywhere there the humidity will be more you just need to spray water that's it that doesn't require any nutrient or fertilizer or anything ee gondi mokkalu chusar ent ent unnayo ipudu ee mokkalu ento veetlu gurinchi adigi teluskundamu so these are bird nest fern is one of the biggest bird nest fern we have it here so these are the native of tropical uh, indonesia you can see uh, these are for indoor or your tropical garden we have lot of these type of bird nest fern in the different sizes so this is like uh, Uh, this doesn't require any soil to grow they just need some uh, cocoa peat or you can mount it on any trees which will become this big 
So each leaf will grow up to 10 feet. So this is not just a fully grown plant. So single leaf. So the single leaf will grow up to 10 feet. That means a plant will go up to a diameter of 20 feet. That, that is the biggest size of plant what I have ever seen. So this is this plant is called Stephenia rotundifolia. So you can see uh, the canopy of this plant. So the speciality of this plant is like a single tuber from the ground will put out leaves like massive leaves. So whoever planning for a massive green cover in your house in the indoor or outdoor mm, can place this uh, pseudo stem on the a shallow pot. So this is of major ornamental value. This uh, pseudo stem will grow up to this big, which will which will have which will add the beauty to your garden. Where this you can creep it all over your fall ceiling and allow it to give a green cover or on the wall or anything. One single plant can give you a, a complete green cover up to a 200 to 300 square feet area. And you can see the texture of these leaves. So how beautiful this uh, leaf pattern is. So this is one of a high biomass producing plant, which is a very good plant for indoor as well as outdoor. So this is Stephenia rotundifolia. Only one single plant we have currently and uh, shortly we are going to procure a lot of materials from uh, Thailand and Indonesia for these type of uh, Stephenias. So this is Monstera alba. You can see this is a half moon Monstera alba having more uh, white color uh, variegation. And surprisingly, uh, this season, for the first time, we have got Monstera fruits. So Monstera is flowering this year. So we are expecting one, two, three fruits over this Monstera plant. So this is a variegated Monstera and fruiting in variegated Monstera is a very rare sighting. So we are, we are fortunate enough to see uh, fruits in our Monstera this year. So we have planted in the ground as a mother plant. I don't want to sell this off, but we have other Monstera albas, Monstera Thai constellations. Uh, Monstera Adinsoni Aurea, all this available for sale. So we are shortly going to list it on our website. You can order there. And uh, in a closer look, we have a Alocasia alba as well. So this is a Alocasia variety with the alba variegation, white variegation. So you can see the pattern of this leaf. And we have a lot of plants, uh, small plants for sale. And uh, we have a Caladium painted palette. So you can see the uh, variegation, I mean the pattern of the leaf. This is a caladium, it's a dwarf variety. So this will maximum grow up to uh, two feet uh, in length in your garden. This is a better plant for your shaded uh, tree garden where uh, you can plant this under your tree. It will give you a very green and colorful palette like uh, patterns in your garden. Adandi, this video, video mik nachindi anukuntha nu. Mere chusar kada chala rare and rare collection will dagrete ondi. In Chandan Gaudagar, some of the details Gani, while website Gani, while Instagram page Gani, Alage, e, uh, nursery location code, and in everything, all details in description box like the Pertano, ever can interest in the Tapakunda check chindi, Alagi video Ganka Mikhachin at Lay the Tapakunda channel, ni, subscribe chess Kunda, Alagi video and like chindi, share chindi, Maraka Manchi video the Malikalistano. Thank you so much for watching.